Yahweh, Shabbat Shalom, even all glorification, honor, and praise unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakah Double honors to the venerable apostles of the Great Millstone, along with the bishops and the elders who were ruling and teaching the church well in these last days. And I want to say salutations to the Baath Shah Dawada, which is the house of David the elect. Oh, yeah, and we're in the middle of a double Sabbath um, tonight at even. Today is November 12, 2023, the hopeful year that all these prophecies come to pass. Tonight at even, you have the new moon, all right? So we'll have another Sabbath again. So anyways, Lord willing, you're, you're having a, a restful one, and you'll have a restful one, you know. Um. I just seen this uh, video on my news feed, and it's from the uh, retired uh, Colonel Douglas McGregor, um, and he's going to speak on you know World War Three. And the the title there you see is "Are We on the Brink of World War Three?" And that's what caught my attention through the spirit. I haven't listened to the video yet, so I'm going to be listening listening so I get to it, you know. As I bring out some precepts, and Lord willing, this will be an informative lesson, and uh, it'll be edifying to the lambs. How about some Yahushai? So I'm just going to begin, and uh, we'll go from there. Sure. You know, you recently started a venture called Our Country, Our Choice, and it's aimed at bringing both sides together. And right now it feels like we can't be more divided, politically left versus right, but also over the wars that are going on. The last Right, right out the gate, <laughs> uh, the woman doing an interview, we can't be more divided, right? This this is a, a kingdom divided against us. So, um, and that division ultimately out in the mouth of Yahweh Shai, you know, that division leads to a, a kingdom, all right, being brought down, all right. Um, but I'm, I'm going to go to Isaiah 19 real quick. And uh, start from the top, Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 1, the burden of Egypt, all right. This is spiritual Egypt that Isaiah, is, that Isaiah Salaki is speaking about through the Spirit, all right, America. All right, the burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord Yahweh rideth upon a swift cloud. How is He going to do that? Through His only begotten Son Yahweh Shai. All right, who's coming? All right, back to destroy this place on a swift cloud. All right, a chariot. Okay, it says, and it shall come into Egypt, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at His presence, and the heart, okay, or mind of Egypt shall melt. In the midst of it, and I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. You heard the woman. You know, this is a kingdom divided along political lines, of course. You know, the Democrats versus the Republicans. Okay. Which they're all the same people. They work for the same interests. They work for the Jewish international banking families. All right. The Mount of Esau Edom. Okay. Uh, and you've got people out here who are pro-Palestinian and you got people out here who are pro-Israeli. All right, there's all types of division, you know. And uh, again, that will lead to the demise of Esau's empire, man. Okay, and I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians and they shall fight everyone against his brother and everyone against it's like everyone against his neighbor, city against city and kingdom against kingdom. All right, so you're about to see whole cities being divided against themselves, man, <laughs> over here in America. Okay? This place is finished, man. All right, Esau, Edom's kingdom is finished, man. You know, uh, uh, Esau is the end of the world, you know, pursuant to uh, Second Ezra, the sixth chapter. All right, the end of this age, okay, it's like it, at the end of this age or, or this world, who will be ruling the Edomites? Okay. And we're at the end, man. So this is the end of his world. This is it. Okay. And this is why brothers are so excited through the spirit. Okay. Because we're witnessing the downfall all right, of our enemy. See, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, 
a Native American Indians who are the Lord's chosen people in the earth among which you spoke with birds as like foreigners have enemies. All right. They're called the nations. OK, the, the heathen nations are your enemies and your biggest enemy is Esau. OK. Your wicked, all right, uh, evil uh, brother, the so-called white man. OK, you have enemies, man, and this devil is fixing to show his horns. He's going to show you something, man. All right, the Lord is going to let this man loose on you. He's going to turn him loose. <laughs> okay, and he's going he's gonna to run roughshod over two-thirds of you. All right? He's going to run roughshod, all right, over two-thirds of, uh, uh, of you jakes, man. Those of you who refuse to hearken, who refuse to repent. All right? So let's go to where you have shot talking about a kingdom divided against it. So let's go to Matthew's 12. And this is uh, verse 25, Matthew chapter 12, verse 25. And, and Yahweh shot knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. So Esau's kingdom is going to be brought to desolation, man. Okay? And America is going to be totally destroyed via those intercontinental ballistic missiles, all right? That nuclear destruction. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? You got Satan divided against Satan. Here again, you have these Edomites who support the war effort over there in the so-called Middle East. And you have Edomites over here who don't support it. All right. Who are, who are uh, back in the, the so-called Palestinians. All right. Which neither of those people groups, neither of those races of people belong in that land. Okay. So we don't back any of them, man. We back Yahweh Bashem Shai in prophecy, all right? So Satan's out here divided against himself, man. And if, it's like verse 27, And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges, okay? Uh, verse 28, But if I cast out devils by the spirit of Yahweh, then the kingdom of Yahweh has come unto you. So anyways, the point being is, yeah, this is a kingdom divided against itself, and Satan is out here divided against himself. All right? So destruction is coming to this place, man. All right? Hold on. Let me, let me get one more precept. Um, well, you know what? No, I'll hold that. Let's keep playing the video. Yeah, right, right, out, right out the gate, man. You know, the spirit speaks. Um, you were on the show, we talked about the global economy fragmenting, as well as the Ukraine war and how we were really being lied to about what was happening, the fact that Ukraine was losing. And a lot of people don't know what to believe about what's happening now in the Middle East. So let's just start by zooming out and setting the scene. Colonel, are we on the brink of another world war? And what does that mean? What does the conflict mean given all the issues that the U.S. faces at home? Uh, I guess you're saving the easy questions for last. Uh, I don't think we're on the brink of a third world war, but of course I could be wrong. That's happened once or twice in my life. I think what we're really dealing with right now is the potential for something which is localized to become regional. And the problem is this, that you have two irreconcilable sides. Uh, you, you're not going to get anywhere with uh, Mr. Netanyahu and his government. And you're not going to get very far with Hamas and its supporters. So the point is, <clears throat> the best that you can hope for in the short run is some sort of ceasefire that gives us breathing space. But thus far, <clears throat> there's been no willingness on the part of uh, either Mr. Netanyahu or Hamas to let up. Now, why are, why are we saying a regional war? <clears throat> this is a very different set of circumstances from the conditions that existed in 1973, which is really the last time that Israel confronted a major war. They've had instances of fighting in, in southern Lebanon in 82 and subsequent to that off and on, but not a major conflict on the scale of the 73 war. This has the potential to move in that direction. But the region has changed. Not only is the region more capable in other words, even the Arab states are more capable. And not only are there new technologies. Involved. Well, 
you know, we are on the brink of a, of a, of a, a world war. Okay. All this is leading up to World War Three, And in fact, you know, you can already say that it's begun. Okay. And it has begun. All right. It just hasn't, it just hasn't spread. He's talking about it, you know, becoming more regional. And that's true. All right. But this is the beginning of World War Three, man. We're in the beginning of sorrows. Okay. That's where we are. I harp on this all the time. Through the power of spirit, we are in the beginning of sorrows. That's where we are on the prophetic timeline. Okay. Um, let's see. And these Amalekites, as it's written, okay, being the least of the flock of Esau Edom, are drawing these nations into this so called conflict. Okay. Let's see. Let's get a. Uh, Matthew 24, let's go back to the book of Matthew and get Matthew 24 in verse 6. And it reads, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. That's all we're hearing about, man. You know, now Turkey's getting involved. Iran has repeatedly stated that if this does not cease and desist, okay, that they're going to be involved. And once Iran gets involved, then Russia's going to get involved and China's going to be pulled in, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. The dragons of Arabia. Okay, they're mentioned in Second Ezra the fifteenth chapter. You know, they're rising up. You know, over there in Yemen, all right, those Houthi rebels, they're rising up, saying, "Hey, we're going to get involved as well." All right, so yeah, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. This is all we're hearing about. It says, "See that ye be not troubled," and we're not. Okay, we're not troubled like you, uh, unbelieving Jake's out here, man. Or like you eat a mice. This doesn't trouble us one bit. We understand this is all part of the Lord's grand plan, man. Okay? <laughs> this is his program and this is a part of it. All right? For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation. Verse 7. All right? Going back to that division. All right? And that's nationality versus nationality. That's that's what that means right there. Nation rising against nation and kingdom against kingdom again the division all right and there shall be what famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places verse 8 all these are the beginning of sorrows okay and we're hearing about earthquakes i was just reading about mount st helen you know what is it 50 small earthquakes in a week you know um hey you know, we're here, man. You know, pestilence is coming. Don't forget about that. All right. Don't forget you got kill baits still out there, you know, and they're cooking shit up in these laboratories that they're going to unleash on the people, man. All right. Which ultimately, it's your how about me our shots will, you know, being done in the earth. All right. So, yeah, war, man. You know, we are on the brink of World War Three. Okay. Now, it's localized right now in Ukraine and in Syria, right, um, et cetera, okay? But it's 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 already begun, all right? Just hasn't gotten to the shores of Babylon the Great yet, a.k.a. America. All right, let's keep going. But we now have Iran and especially Turkey standing on the sidelines, both of whom could enter this conflict, and that would have very serious consequences for Israel and for us. So what we would like to do, I think, I think with the Biden administration now a little late to the game, obviously, but what they would like to do is contain the conflict. Unfortunately, their diplomacy has been an enormous failure. Wherever Blinken has gone, he's left things worse than they were before he showed up. And I think the situation now is really quite serious. And we don't have any leadership in the White House. Historically, when we were afraid that the Israelis would go too far or their opponents might, we had a president in the White House who personally intervened and said, that's enough. He said things right now are really quite serious. Well, yeah, that's an understatement, man. You know, and that's why the prophets are out here beginning at the top with the elder apostles, a great millstone on down. That's why the prophets are out here blowing a trumpet, man. Sounding the alarm, you know, warning. Okay, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, again, being the Lord's chosen people in the earth, along with you speckled birds. All right, that just destruction is coming. 
and you need to repent, okay? Because the doors of mercy are about to slam shut, man. All right? The Lord's not going to have us out here speaking much longer. Matter of fact, I was thinking about doing a lesson on that. You know, we still want a time to speak, but yeah, uh, he said things have gotten serious. That's an understatement. All right. Um, let's get Second Timothy's real quick. And like I said, I hadn't watched this. I just, it just caught my eye through the spirit. That's how it works, man. <laughs> you know. There's so many things to speak on, you know. We got no excuses not to be edifying the lambs, you know. It's all about, as the elder apostle Gobar, you know, mentioned years ago, you know, it's all about daily edification, you know. Now, of course, there's much to, that's like, yeah, there's much more to this lifestyle and, and to this truth than doing videos, all right? But that's that's an important part of our job, man. Teaching, daily edifying. Second Timothy chapter three and verse one. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Right, the situation is dire, man, and there's no way out. And it's looking more and more like this is gonna spread, and it's gonna gonna become regional. There's not gonna be, you know, a much stopping it. All right, um, from a, from from a. Uh, the diplomatic standpoint it looks like this is it now when i say that you know certain other things have to come to pass before the destruction comes you know we have to have a famine of hearing this word and you know esau has to implement that motb which is the micro c hip on a global scale those two things you know have to happen prior to the the nukes being shot on babylon the great all right so when i say this is it i mean you know Hey, like, like the, like the question is being posed. Are we on the brink of World War Three? Yeah, we are. You know. So, um, let's see. Let's let's uh let's keep going. This far and no further. We we have nothing like that. So the Israelis really have the proverbial blank check from uh, President Biden, similar to what uh, the German emperor gave to the emperor of Austria-Hungary in 1914. That, of course, was a serious mistake. And uh, that's what we're afraid of right now, that things will rapidly spin out of control. Well, things could certainly escalate. And I was curious, what do you have to say, Colonel, about all the emotions out there on both sides, people wanting retribution for the civilians killed? I know you've talked about the notion of collective punishment and how that can breed new enemies. So what should people know? Well, gosh, what should people know? We could go back over the history, and there's plenty of blame on each side for the current tragedy. But if you go back to the Camp David Accords, which some of your viewers will remember, there was a discussion between Menachem Begin, who at the time uh, was the prime minister in Israel, and uh, President Sadat of Egypt. And Menachem Begin actually offered control of Gaza to Egypt. He said, you know, you're Muslim Arabs. Why don't you take control of it? We don't want it. It's a tinderbox. In other words, it's a catalyst for conflict. And President Sadat said, not on your life. We don't want Gaza. Now, why would he say that? Well, for two reasons. Number one, his own society was fragile. Let's be, let's be frank. And he was not comfortable with suddenly admitting a couple of million more people who might come in and destabilize his own population. That's, that's not unusual in the Arab world. You can find the same attitude in Saudi Arabia, the Emirates, Jordan, and so forth. But then there's another dimension to this that needs to be understood. Well, let's pause it there. I'm going to wrap this up in just a second, too. But uh, he's talking about the dragons of Arabia right there, right? They're going to remember their nature, man. Okay. Those Ishmaelites over there, all right, because that the, the, them Arabs that are over there, them uh, so-called Palestinians spread throughout that region, they're the sons of Ishmael. And they crazy as hell, man. All right. And a lot of those dudes are over here in america waiting on the order all right and they're gonna be cut loose but they're remembering their nature okay and it talks about them 
you know, uh, coming, man. Okay, hold on. Let me let me get this. In Second Ezra fifteen. And I'll pick it up in verse 27, and it reads, For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth, and ye shall remain in them. For Yahweh shall not deliver you, because ye have sinned against them. See, and that's why deliverance ain't coming to the whole house of Israel, man. Deliverance is only coming for the elect, beginning with the 144,000 and that remnant of believing Israelites. Okay, but the elect, man, is, is the prize, man, the first fruits of salvation, 144,000. Lord willing, we're a part of that number. All right. Behold an horrible vision, verse 28, because what the prophets saw, which they in the ancient world, it was called seers, was terrifying, man. We've all had visions. I've had visions and dreams that were horrific that left you like shaking, man, literally. OK, well, that's what that's what uh, happened to, to these men, you know, horrible visions, man. Horrible visions that, that have you shook. OK. Seeing this destruction and writing writing these things down, man, that's terrifying, man. You know, fear. That's why we say fear the Lord, man. This horrible America's latter end is horrific, man. Okay. Behold, an horrible vision and the appearance thereof from the east, where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, and the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth. That all they which hear them may may fear and tremble. They got massive militaries over there, man. Iran, which you know them are the them are the, them are the Persians, all right, the Carmanians, all right. But uh, Iraq, uh, it's like it. You know, the, the sons of Ishmael are vast are a vast people, man. They are a vast. Ishmael is a vast people, okay. And they're coming, man. Them crazy sons of bitches. <laughs> They coming, man. Okay? And it's going to cause Esau to fear and tremble. All right? It says, also the Carmanians, verse 30, which is Iran, raging in wrath, shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood, and with great power shall they come and join battle with them. And shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. And then shall the dragons have the upper hand, remembering their nature, and if they shall turn themselves, conspiring together with great power to persecute them. Okay, so basically, you know they're gonna they're gonna uh, play a a big role, all right, in Esau's demise. The dragons of Arabia, man. Okay, all them countries over there: Iraq, all right, Egypt, Yemen, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar. All right, those are all the dragons. Of Arabia, Saudi Arabia, of course. All right. So anyway, yeah. Are we on the brink of World War Three? Yes. And take it a step further. World War Three has already commenced. Okay. And it's fixing to go global. So now is the time, man. You know, now is the time to come into the spiritual art that's being prepared. Okay. Now is the time, you know, to uh Repent, return to the Lord, return to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay. And Lord willing, I don't want to write this out. You was edified through the Spirit. With that, I don't want to say Shalom, but it's on to the next video.